And Flori is going to present about pea uh, stranding in Romanian under sleuthing. So it's her research apprenticeship project done with Klaus, and it's about syntax. Yeah, it's Romanian pea stranding under sleuthing. Here's the outline of the presentation today. So it's coming about with a project because I want you guys to also like realize how I got into this. Uh, then defining sleuthing, short summary of the competing accounts, the experimental designs of the experiment of the two experiments that are hopefully going to be run at some point, and the expected results and discussion. All right, uh, coming back with a project. So I did it as part of the research apprenticeship in linguistics module. Um, I did it in the first term. I contacted Klaus somewhere early in September. Then we agreed on a contract and signed it. We had regular one-to-one -one meetings every other week. Um, at the beginning, I had to read on the, to, to read the assigned readings on the topic. And then um, we would look at the features that Romanian has uh, that can be used in the experiment. Uh, and then we finalized by creating the experimental design. For the second term, well, I, I, I kind of continued with the project in the second term as well, but we had fewer meetings because of everything that was going on, obviously, in the second term. So it's now on hold, and that's basically why we didn't run it yet. We were supposed to do it, but with everything going on, it's been a lot more complicated than it was supposed to be originally. But yeah, it was definitely the most fun I've had in second year. It was... I think it was the best module. I enjoyed it a lot and all the meetings and reading and then even creating the stimuli in Romanian. It was, you think it's, if it's your native language, it might be easier, but it's not really. And then you start questioning your own, um, <laughs> your own beliefs of the language <laughs> and your own um, ability to tell whether it's grammatical or not. And it's funny, you, 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 you really needed a second speaker to check it for you as well. Anyway, go, moving on. Um, now it's about sluicing in general. So first, it was the idea was put forward by Ras in 1969. And it, it was defined as the deletion operation of a syntactically complete clause that bears the WH feature, so that has a WH phrase. And Everything is deleted within the clause except for the WH element that can connect with a an, with an antecedent under a, some identity condition. Now here, let's talk about the terms. As you can see, so we have the sluice, so basically the entire um, the entire clause right here, the entire embedded clause. Here is the ellipsis side, which is basically the unpronounced stuff of the sentence and the remnant, that is the WH phrase that remains pronounced. Now the, the WH phrase, the remnant, is supposed to have, has an, a semantic identity with the, with the correlate and then also the antecedent has to have an identity with the, with the overall sluice. So then in 1A, we interpret a John bought a car, but, but I don't know which one, as John bought a car, but I don't know which car John bought. Then in 1B, John bought a car, but I don't know what else John bought. It can be a car, it can be anything, but this, this is a contrasted version of, of a sluice. That's the difference between the two. Uh, the, the correlate cannot, doesn't have to be a DP necessarily, uh, but can also be a PP or an AP. Um, in two, we have a PP. John, Jordan gave the book to someone, but I have no idea to whom to whom John gave the book, Jordan. Oopsie. It's supposed to be Jordan right here. I got too, too keen on John from the previous slide and misspelled it. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, in, so in three, they spoke of an incredible student, but I'm not sure how sure, but I'm not sure how incredible. And in here, in, in sentence three, it's slightly different from sentence two and the others from before because the ellipsis side and the sluice no longer share the same syntactic structure. You can see here, this is a copula. This is a copula here, but then 
there's nothing of that sort in the antecedent. Then in four, I know that in each instance, one of the girls got something from one of the boys, but which from which? And in this case, it's not really a regular WH movement anymore because there's two WH phrases moving. And obviously they cannot go, both of them cannot go in the same position, into the same position. One of, one, only one of them goes into the spec CP position, the other one still stays in, um, in its original position. All right, now very similar to uh, Ross's account is Merchant's a PhD thesis from 1999, where he formalized the second form identity generalization, uh, which basically says that a language L will allow P stranding on the sluicing if and only if L allows P stranding on the regular WH movement. movement. This is uh, what we try to, try to evaluate with the experiments. So what this generalization tells us basically is are the following assumptions that uh, there is syntactic identity between the antecedent and the ellipsis side, and that this the, the movement within the sluice is just regular WH movement. But really, as we've seen before, it doesn't seem to work that way. Okay, so in order to account for all sluicing cases, we need to have a theory that must offer a common solution to the, to the following questions, really. Um, so first, we need to look whether the identity condition that links the sluice to its antecedent is indeed syntactic, and if not, what is its actual nature? Second, if the syntactic, syntactic structure of the ellipsis site is variable, depending on the context, and then whether WH movement truly accounts for all cases of sluicing. And then we have the other, the newest, account that Klaus put together and all of this so modular agreement in the it's it's the fit generalization and it says that modular agreement in the antecedent and wh movement replacing the correlate by the remnant in the antecedent must lead to a syntactically well-formed structure with the right meaning or for sprouting adding the correlate into the antecedent making no further changes must lead to a syntactically well-formed structure with the intended thematic interpretation that basically says, uh, because it's a lot of intricate words right there, over there, I don't know what he says, I'm going to use this scheme over here, that uh, there is semantic identity between the antecedent and the ellipsis side, and the swapping between the correlate and the remnant in the antecedent, must, like the, the remnant and the correlate that is already in, in the antecedent must lead to a grammatical structure that deems the intended semantic interpretation. So that's basically what all of this says. This has the, the antecedent and the ellipsis side have to be under semantic identity, and then the remnant and the correlate must, the, the swapping of the two must render a grammatical sentence with the intended semantic interpretation. All right, now moving on to the experimental designs. So you must know that Romanian doesn't generally allow preposition stranding. So, uh, when, you know, English does. Uh, so they're very different in this aspect. So when you say, when you have a question, when you form a question, you can literally see how, how English allows preposition stranding because you're, you're not saying, or what are you, are you using this? But what are you using this for? So the preposition is basically stranded at the end, at the end of the uh, of the sentence it remains in the original place and only the wh phrase moves to the front well in romanian you'd say pentru ce folosi asta and pentru is for uh, and then you move the the wh phrase all together with the preposition so the preposition cannot be st stranded but uh, kind of does hired piping so it goes all together with the wh phrase hence the four binary factors factors that we used were preposition stranding. So we, we've had preposition stranding and preposition part piping, sluicing. Um, we have sluices versus overt continuation of the sluice. That would be, um, I met someone yesterday, guess who? So that's the sluicing version. And then I met someone yesterday, guess who I met yesterday? That's the overt continuation. Then case matching, um, case matching of the 
remnant with the correlate or case mismatching, there is um, a contrast in form in Romanian between accusative and nominative, accusative and nominative and oblique cases. So what uh, nominative cases, uh, nominative case nouns don't uh, require, don't need prepositions, but for accusative, most of the times they do. Uh, so what we did was basically compare the create um, the uh, create a contrast between oblique cases that are uh, genitive and dative interchangeably and accusative. And then the fourth factor was remnant complexity, and we used simplex versus complex remnant. So that would be I bought a car yesterday. Yes, which car? That's complex remnant. Remnant. It has a WH phrase and a noun, and then uh, I saw someone yesterday guess who, and that's just simplex. It's the it's only the WH phrase. The pattern of the stimuli was the one presented in five. Uh, the main clause subject, the main verb, sometimes with an adverbial phrase, the preposition, and yeah, the indefinite internal argument, the uh, but or end. Uh, we use two conjuncts here, the negation, the second clause subject, if needed, the embedding verb, the adverbial phrase, and the WH element. So we've had, here's an example of that. So here's the subject, and the, it's basically the press um, have spoken on a degrading tone about someone, but not all people have understood exactly about who um, and here's the glossary of that of all that and that's basically the subject the verb and then this is the the remnant the the correlate here then the uh, conjunction the negation and everything going on and then the second the embedding predicate and then the remnant of the sluice we've had 64 sentences to be used as fillers in addition to the 32 experimental stimuli and you can see in this table that for the experimental stimuli we've used four prepositions the top two are for uh, oblique cases and then the bottom two are for accusative then yeah this the remnant form is either, either simplex or complex and then these are the cases so therefore we've used 64 fillers and uh, also we've had comprehension qu questions to make sure the, the, sp the speakers, the participants understand what's going on with the, um, with the stimuli and everything. Like they, they can understand the language and just, just, just to make sure that like real speakers of Romanian take the experiment. And for the stimuli, we've had 20 questions. And for the fillers, we've had uh, 32. As out of the 64 uh, fillers, only 32 were grammatical. So we've had 64, 32 grammatical and 32 ungrammatical. And also for the grammatical, uh, for the, yeah, for the comprehension questions, uh, half of them, so therefore 16 were false, and then the other 16 were true, and then here, 10 and 10 split half halfway. Uh, here is the so we basically not did not only have one experiment in mind but two of them. This was the first one and then this one would be the second one. That's basically what you've seen before in um, let me show you here in the, like the contrast between one A and one B, which is just or in one way we have regular sluicing and then in one B we have uh, contrastive sluicing. So then in the second experiment is basically just a uh, piece turning under contrastive sluicing. All of the experimental stimuli, fillers, and comprehension questions were adapted from the previous experiment. Uh, the experimental stimuli have been transformed into contrast sluices from regular sluices. Fillers containing different types of contrast have been introduced and comprehension questions regarding both experimental items and fillers have been changed to account for the contrast. And here is an example. Um, so then it's accusation, terrible, it would be terrible accusations levitate against, levitate against a politician, but I don't realize against who else. 
And here would be the, the, the conditions in this one would be case matching. So we have the uh, Asupra Primo Ministro would be, is oblique. And then Asupra Cui Alt Cui Va is again oblique. The, the Cui, the double Cui Alt Cui Va, this all together is the oblique form. Uh, otherwise, the, the accusative form would be Cina Al Cine Va. Yeah, if anyone's interested, <laughs> but mainly for the Romanian speakers around. And then we have the uh, preposition piled piping. So we keep the preposition in both the sluice and the obviously the in the yeah in the remnant and the correlate. Um, we have sluicing because there's no there's no pronounced continuation overt continuation of the sentence without the sluice. So it would be terrible accusations levitate against a politician, but I don't realize against who else uh, terrible accusations levitate. Okay, and it's simple. It's it's simplex because there's no there's no NP here. It's just the it's just WH phrase. Uh, just like in English, it's uh, who else? It's it might be tricky because it's two words, but it's not really two different things. It's just the WH word that's contrastive. It's there's no NP like proper NP over here. If it, if that were the case, it would it would sound like terrible accusations levitate against a politician, but I don't realize against uh, which other politician. So that that would be with a complex NP. All right, for the expected results and discussion, we have that P preposition stranding are the sluicing is less acceptable than pied piping, both in in elliptical and non elliptical conditions, but at the same time much more acceptable than preposition stranding in non-elliptical conditions. So non-elliptical clauses that undergo preposition stranding will be regarded as ungrammatical. And then we also have that apparent preposition stranding of the sluicing might occur in Romanian, and it is acceptable only if, pres only if present in evasive sources such as copular clauses. So as you've seen, the that would be like a copular clause. They spoke of an incredible student, but I'm not sure how incredible the student is. That's a popular clause over here. And then sometimes in Romanian, it might seem tricky and you might think you can drop the preposition, but it's only because it comes from, from a copular clause and the actual WH word becomes a, a, a subject and not just moves over there for the sluice. It has some other syntactic properties. So it appears that uh, oh yeah, and also the, the link between the sluice and the antecedent is not syntactic but rather semantic. So then it appears that the predicted results would fall into favor of the theoretical approach forwarded by Klaus in 2019, as I've said before, confirming the semantic identity between the antecedent and the sluice, uh, confirming the syn the need of syntax at the ellipsis side, but the by the expected grammaticality of case mismatching I, um, and obeying the fit condition with regards to the preposition pied piping preference over preposition surrounding of, of a P pied piping language. But it shall be noticed that unless the two experiments are actually run, there's no way to tell what's the truth in this uh, because it's very unlike, like, no, experiments are not usually done in Romanian, especially on this on this topic. So it, I think it would be the first experiment to be done on Romanian in, in this case. And yeah, that's basically it. Here are the references in case anyone is interested on reading more of what I've talked about. Well, that would be all. Thank you.